So um, I was asked to give a talk about what the optimal treatment strategy uh, is for esophageal and uh, GE junction cancers. So although we have active debates about what the optimal therapy approach is for these uh, diseases, at the end of the day, our currently available treatments really have a quite poor outcome. We achieve survival with surgery alone of only about 20 to 40 percent, uh, and our adjuvant trials have largely been preoperative, uh, looking at preoperative chemotherapy or a combination of chemotherapy and radiation, which is the most common practice uh, in the United States. But we have to remember that the addition of chemotherapy has a modest impact. Uh, if we look at uh, modern studies of perioperative chemotherapy versus surgery alone, uh, particularly studies that included a significant percentage of esophageal and G-junction cancers, MAGIC, FFCD, and OEO2, uh, we achieved hazard ratios of about 0.67 to as, as low as 0.86, with five-year survival increments of 5 to 15 percent, so, so quite, a, quite a small impact. If we look at the Asian series, which treated mostly uh, uh, more distal gastric cancers with uh, postoperative chemotherapy, including ACT, GS, and Classic, which collectively treated 2,000 patients with gastric cancer, similar hazard ratios for adjuvant chemotherapy uh, with, again, a, five -year, a modest survive, five-year survival increment of only 10 percent. So, so this, at the end of the day, is what we're arguing about, a small impact. So if we look at the impact of postoperative radiation and gastric cancer uh, before we talk about esophagus cancer, this clearly depends on the quality of the surgery that's performed. Uh, one of the first positive adjuvant studies was the U.S. Intergroup Trial 116, giving postoperative 5-FU and radiation, and you, know, you can clearly see a survival benefit for this treatment. But nearly 60% of patients on this study had a D0 resection. Only 10% had a D2 resection, which is considered the acceptable standard. Then if we look at two more contemporary studies, artists and critics, where uh, patients largely had D1 and D2 resections, uh, the artist trial, you can see, failed to show any benefit for the addition of postoperative radiation to chemotherapy, perhaps some benefit in the intestinal and node-positive patients. And the recent critics trial, which we're going to hear a presentation of uh, later today, 87% D1, D2 resection. And to me, uh, this study shows no benefit for uh, adding a postoperative radiation to perioperative chemotherapy. So why then should we include preoperative radiation and esophageal and GE junction cancers? And the two things I'm going to focus the most uh, on in this talk are we really need to ensure an R0 resection. Uh, anything less than an R0 resection is really uh, equivalent to death from disease. We also need to reduce local recurrence. This is a, a significant problem uh, in this disease. So what are the data for preoperative chemotherapy? Well, I'm going to first look at the older studies and then look at more contemporary studies, and I think you'll be shocked to see that the same results have been obtained despite 30 years of trials with this approach. So this was the American trial, uh, intergroup 113. This was perioperative platinum 5-FU. Uh, and you can see uh, the American study of this approach was really completely negative. This is the updated uh, survival results uh, uh, published back in 2007. Uh, when I was a junior faculty at Memorial, I think I put 20 patients on this trial, and the only patient that survived got surgery alone. So my personal experience with this approach uh, was not too uh, encouraging. And if we look at resection type, uh, R0 resections in only about 60% of patients. So six, 59 to 63% of patients getting R0 resection, and at least in this study, no improvement with uh, chemotherapy alone. And again, as I alluded to earlier, uh, if you do not get an R0 resection, you die. So the only patients that have long-term survival are patients that have had, had a curative uh, resection. Uh, what about recurrence patterns? Um, so this looks at all the R0 patients on uh, 113, and up to 30% of patients, even with an R0 resection, had some component of local recurrence. So when you factor in a 60% rate of R0 resection and a 30% rate of local recurrence, uh, this is, is not, not a good outcome. 
So what about OEO2? This was the larger British study giving preoperative platinum 5-FU. Um, and I've included the updated survival uh, for all patients and then for adenocarcinoma on the right. And at the end of the day, this was a marginally positive study. Uh, it, it improved survival by about 5% uh, compared to uh, surgery alone. And again, uh, R0 resection rates were quite poor uh, in this older study. Uh, surgery alone, 54%. It was improved to 60% with preoperative chemotherapy. Uh, and actually, that was the only endpoint on this trial that was positive. Uh, there was no impact of chemotherapy on distant metastatic recurrence. The study basically improved R0 resection rates slightly, but again, 54 to 60 percent. Now, keep the 60 percent number in mind when we look at some of the more contemporary studies. And again, similar uh, to intergroup 113, uh, the, really the patients that get long-term benefit are the R0 uh, resection patients. So anything less than an R0 resection uh, usually will, will result in, in death from disease. So what about recurrence after surgery? Uh, well, if you look at all comers, uh, that is you count everybody in the denominator, the local failure rates are about 17 to 19%. But on this study as well, if you only look at the R0 patients, the local failure rates are about 30%. So this is quite, quite a high local failure rate and a low rate of R0 resection. Uh, now, one of the outlier studies uh, was FFCD. Uh, this treated esophageal and gastric cancer, again, perioperative platinum 5-FU. Uh, R0 resection rate was improved on this study from 74 to 84%, but again, quite, quite high local recurrence rates if you only look at the patients that underwent R0 resection, about 30 to 35%. Can we salvage an R1 resection? Well, I think it's pretty convincing that in most patients, anything less than an R0 resection equates to death from disease. Uh, however, on intergroup 113, there was permission for patients to get postoperative radiation uh, at the investigator's discretion. And 18 of 34 surgery alone patients that had positive margins did receive postoperative chemotherapy and radiation. And interestingly, some of them were salvaged. About 21% were uh, long term uh, survivors. Uh, OEO2, there really wasn't a comment about postoperative radiation, and some of the patients got preoperative radiotherapy. So why, not, why don't we just give postoperative radiation? This is why. It's a huge field. This is a very morbid treatment. You have to treat uh, the surgical bed and also the anastomosis that you bring up into the chest. So most of us will, will really not give uh, postoperative uh, radiation for, uh, for a GE uh, junction cancer. So what have we learned? Uh, I think for preoperative chemotherapy alone, for esophageal and GE junction cancers, older studies indicate very poor rates of R0 resection of 60%, consistent across the early trials, uh, perhaps with the exception of FFCD, which is a smaller study that included gastric cancer. And in addition, in all the studies, even after R0 resection, up to 30% uh, rates of local recurrence are reported. So that begs the question, are we doing better in 2016? And I'm actually going to cite uh, several of Dr. Cunningham's studies that I think are very, very uh, illustrative that, that we've not made, made progress here. So uh, OEO5, I think, was a very important study presented at ASCO last year uh, by Dr. Cunningham. This was a randomized trial of two cycles of platinum 5-FU versus um, uh, ECF-based treatment. Uh, and this was a large uh, study of 900 patients, uh, endoscopic ultrasound staged. So we knew uh, uh, what the stage was for patients going into treatment. And patients were randomized to two cycles of preoperative platinum 5-FU based on the OEO2 results or four cycles of uh, ECX. Uh, these are the demographics, 87% uh, T3 and no positive disease in 76%. So this was a, 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 our typical poor risk uh, population that we see. And the other thing is that these were well-staged patients. Uh, so maybe back in the 1990s, we didn't do endoscopic ultrasound and PET scans. But on this uh, study, everybody had an endoscopic ultrasound. 50% uh, had laparoscopic staging. And 60% had a PET scan. So maybe we're putting better patients into the study maybe outcomes will be, will be better.
So uh, after perioperative chemotherapy, about 90% of patients went to surgery. But boy, this looks familiar. <laughs> 59% R0 resection rate in 2015 for uh, CF, and it was a little better, 67% for uh, ECX. And this is 20 years later, despite endoscopic ultrasound, laparoscopy, and PET scan. Uh, and I think importantly, the study did show that beyond two cycles of CF, there was no benefit. Uh, more chemotherapy wasn't better, and adding epirubicin wasn't better. Uh, and maybe this study did trend better than OEO2. I mean, there was a slight improvement in survival compared to the previous study, uh, and that's probably, as, as Dr. Cunningham discussed, due to due better patient selection. And again, if we look at survival by R0 status, uh, I can imagine that the patients with R1 and R2 resections, if you follow them up much longer, did not uh, live uh, for five years. So another important study uh, that Dr. Cunningham presented at ECHO last year, I think, uh, comes to very similar conclusions, STO3. This was a perioperative chemotherapy trial of ECX with or without bevacizumab. A uh, 1,000 patients, the majority, about two-thirds, had esophagus or GE junction adenocarcinomas, and patients got standard perioperative ECX with or without bevacizumab. So the primary endpoint of the study to show a survival benefit for adding bevacizumab was not reached. Median overall survival was the same, but we had a higher leak rate with uh, bevacizumab. But look at this. What were the R0 resection rates in this study? 1,000 patients. So if we look at all patients, uh, the R0 range from about 57 to 59%. If we only look at the patients that went to surgery, for esophageal and type 1 uh, uh, G junction tumors, the R0 resection rate was 60%. So if we move a little bit further down to CWR2, it goes to 71%, 75% for type 3, and then 87% for stomach cancer. So, but overall, for the esophagus and G junction cancers, the R0 resection rate, I think, is quite poor, and one could argue marginally better than what we did 20 years. 20 years ago. So what about chemoradiation? Uh, the, this is the, the CROSS trial, which looked at a brief course of weekly carboplatinum paclitaxel and radiation, followed by surgery versus surgery alone. Uh, and comparing the demographics of CROSS and OEO2, uh, similar high T-stage, maybe more node-positive disease in uh, OEO5. And here, uh, uh, we can see that with surgery alone, again, the R0 resection rate with surgery alone is about 69%. Uh, and that's what we saw with preoperative chemotherapy on multiple other studies. So whether preoperative chemotherapy improves R0, I think, is debatable. But 69% with surgery alone, and that's consistent from other studies. And it went up to 92%. And if we want to look at all the patients' intention to treat, that including the people that didn't go to surgery, it still improved from 59% to 83%, which was highly statistically significant. So here we, we do see a, a significant incremental improvement in R0 resection. And survival was improved. Uh, recently, the data were updated. There was some debate, does this really improve outcome in adenocarcinomas? But the updated survival data does show a benefit. What about failure patterns? Well, here we see, again, surgery alone, 34% local failure was reduced to 14%. And I know there's a lot of debate about whether this was enough chemotherapy, but peritoneal disease was reduced by 10% and distant metastasis by 6%. So even five weeks of chemotherapy also had a systemic impact. Well, lastly, I just want to comment on the Stahl trial, which compared head-to-head. -head. This was a small, underpowered study in T3-4 disease comparing chemo versus chemoradiation head-to-head, -head. and no difference in R0 resection in this study, but all the other endpoints favored chemoradiation, including local recurrence and uh, three-year uh, survival. So what is the optimal preoperative treatment for esophagus and GE junction cancer? Again, chemotherapy alone, remember a modest impact, 5 to 15 percent. I would argue that contemporary data really make us really insist that for esophagus and at least the type 1 tumors that combine chemoradiation increases R0 resection rates and reduces local recurrence, where we get a 30% rate of local recurrence with or without chemotherapy uh, for, um, uh, after R0.
we now have data from two contemporary trials, 1,600 patients. 1,600, we need more studies. 1,600 patients. The R0 resection rate is 60 to 67 percent despite modern staging with the worst R0 rates in esophageal and GE junction type 1 and 2 tumors. These are consistent outcomes for three decades. How many more studies do we need to do? So what's next? Uh, we're all waiting for the results from FLOT4. Uh, this is looking at adding a taxane uh, to preoperative chemotherapy. Will adding a taxane improve survival? I think we already have some negative data from uh, trials from Italy and Japan that indicate that sequencing a taxane does not improve outcome. Uh, many th are hoping that the higher path CR rate will translate into better uh, survival, but we didn't see that with OEO5. Uh, path CR with ECX was better than CF, but the R0 resection rates really were not different. And then the ongoing studies I've just mentioned, Top Gear, uh, Cross versus Magic in Ireland, and Isopec uh, in Europe. But again, my colleagues, will reshuffling the deck of marginally active therapies really move our field forward? What's the next step? I think we need better biomarkers of chemo response. We talked a little bit about PET scan. Uh, we're awaiting the results of the US trial where we used PET scan to actually change chemotherapy, CLGB80803. Patients got induction chemotherapy and then a change in their chemotherapy during radiation depending on PET response. What about markers like ERCC1? I think uh, that we're gonna have to pass given the negative uh, data to date. Targeted agents have failed uh, in uh, trials including uh, EGFR and uh, bevacizumab, and we await the results of ongoing studies of trastuzumab. Dr. Bass is going to talk about the genomic subsets in esophagogastric cancer. Immunotherapy, I think, is an, an, an appealing strategy to try and control microscopic residual disease. Uh, there is a signal of activity for these drugs and we could uh, consider developing trials uh, as an adjuvant in high-risk patients, and such a trial is already going to be started uh, with nivolumab and uh, patients after chemoradiation. And there's a strong rationale to combine these drugs with radiotherapy, given the potential antigen release during radiation. And then lastly, uh, we really need better measures of minimal residual disease, and uh, uh, looking at circulating tumor DNA, this may look, uh, prove to be a very uh, a powerful biomarker to detect residual disease. Thanks very much.